Building upon Judge Browning's visit, my guest today is Chief Justice Mark E. Rechtenwald of Hawaii Supreme Court. Chief Justice Rechtenwald serves along with four other justices, justices and as, as the fifth Chief Justice in the court's history since Hawaii became a state. On January 27th, in a joint address to the House and Senate, we heard from Chief Justice Rechtenwald about the state of the judiciary. Welcome, CJ. Thank you so much for joining us. As we heard, the courts are continuing to work through the pandemic. You shared with us your uh, judiciary address. I wanted to just open this up to you and ask you, uh, what's happening with the courts? What's happening from your perspective? Well, thank you so much, uh, Rep. Bilotti, for your leadership and uh, for the House majority for uh, giving us this opportunity to uh, speak with the community and share what's been happening. And, you know, really, um, you know, it's been obviously a, a, an extraordinary past year. Um, and really what, you know, we've learned a couple of things from the pandemic. One is, you know, you have to be willing to adapt and uh, and try new things. And for us, that was moving from, uh, you know, a, a system that was built on people being in the courthouse, coming to the courthouse physically, uh, to using remote hearings to minimize the number of folks who are coming in. And, you know, we really went from, you know, almost no remote hearings to, I think in the last uh, four months of the year, we've used 128,000 hearings of some kind uh, in courts across the state where people were appearing remotely. So we really went from zero to 60 and, you know, just a, a very short period of time and really, you know, uh, transform the model of what courts are and what they can be. Um, and, you know, that was something, you know, we talked about, we'd looked at before. And, uh, you know, we we really had looked even at, at using online dispute resolution as sort of a new tool for the judiciary. But this forced us uh, to really move into the 21st century, as Chief Judge Browning says. So that was really, it's transformational, you know, and I think it, it's going to shape who we are in the future. Uh, and um, it's something that we're really trying to like look at and figure out how we can incorporate it into who we are going to be going forward. And really the keys are uh, making us more accessible to people, reducing barriers to justice and making us more transparent because, you know, people can uh, more easily participate in their court hearings uh, if they're able to do so remotely rather than, for example, having come down to district court uh, to uh, contest a traffic citation. Uh, they take off the morning, drive down, park. This way they can log on to a Zoom proceeding and it's much faster, more convenient. And so that makes us more accessible, which is really what we should be about. So uh, it really has been uh, as challenging and, and as horrible as the impacts have been throughout our community. It's forced us to sort of grow, adapt, and I think ultimately change for the better. So before the pandemic, you know, I know about your commitment, um, Chief Justice, to the community and making sure the courts are accessible. And so much of that meant people coming into the courthouses. But now that we're in this virtual environment, um, we are doing things differently even here at the legislature. But, you know, in certain places where you have to deal with, um, you know, community court, where you really sometimes do need that person to person or you need to connect people with services. What are you seeing happening with the court's role in dealing with those specific courts and also with just the, the issue just generally, all these tough issues that come before the court? Well, a couple of things. I mean, there's some types of proceedings and we never shut down completely in person. There are, you know, initial appearances in serious criminal cases, um, restraining orders in domestic violence cases where, we still had people coming in our courthouse even in the very early weeks of the pandemic. But uh, as we've been able to transition a lot of proceedings online, there are still others um, like uh, jury trials that, you know, really, uh, especially in the criminal cases, have to be done uh, in person. There's a constitutional right to confrontation. And so we spent a lot of time planning the resumption of jury trials. Uh, really meticulously measuring the courtrooms, uh, building plexiglass barriers, uh, obtaining um, air filtration systems, and um, you know doing walkthroughs with the bar, um, having Department of Health come and walk through. And so you know, we were, as Judge Browning said, ready to go in August. We slowed down because of the uh, surge that came in late summer, but we've restarted across the state now. We've had about 20 jury trials. Uh, and, you know, we're very, very grateful to uh, folks who come up and uh, come in and appear as jurors. So 
Uh, that part uh, of our operation remains in person. But another part <clears throat> that I'd like to talk about is you know, our community outreach court, which is a, a very special program that's been around now for about three years. And it's really targeted at addressing uh, always nonviolent, low-level offenders who are pet, pet misdemeanor, petty misdemeanor cases, often experiencing homelessness, uh, who just have found themselves in a cycle of coming into court, uh, incurring fines, sometimes bench warrants, not being able to pay those off, back again, back again, arresting, cycling, getting arrested and cycling through the system. And, you know, that was something we realized we, we had to do something different and we had to find a more effective way to intervene. And that's been community outreach court, which we go out into the communities, the prosecutor, public defender, go out and engage with folks, uh, particularly in communities where there are a lot of homeless individuals, and identify those who might want to participate in this program. The hallmarks are accountability. Folks have to perform community service. Um, if they can't pay the fine, so community service. We make services accessible to them uh, and um, you know, so, you know, counseling, uh, housing, whatever. And we go out to the communities where they are, which traditionally we've done in person. Now we're starting to do that uh, again remotely. Uh, and that's something we're very, very excited about. And I really thank uh, Judge Daryl Lendia, who's been the leader uh, in that court here on Oahu. Mm -hmm.